Hey, how's it going? George Anderson here with a video on procrastination and one of the reasons why we tend to put things off. We've talked previously about when things are unclear, we haven't got clarity on exactly what it is we need to do. And we've also talked about when things are untimed and there's no end in sight to this thing, so we end up putting it off because we'll wait until we've got some more time, which obviously is code for never. Um, and then there's the third reason, which is the one I want to talk to you about today, which is when something is unpleasant. We just don't really want to do it. So there are a couple of ways around that. Before that, this is the, I want to talk about the, my 3Ds filter, which you may have come across before, but uh, this is something that will this is something that will work for each of the different methods of procrastination and anything, in fact, that you have to do. So think about running every task, every project, every idea, every behavior activity through this 3Ds filter first before deciding if you do actually need to get it done. And it's a really simple structure. First of all, decide, is this really necessary? What's gonna happen if I don't do this? And can I delete it? That's the first D, delete. Now bear in mind that not doing something may not have immediate or even short-term consequences. So can I, do I need to start eating healthily? You know, I'm not gonna die straight away if I don't start eating healthily. I'm not gonna put on a weight like this second. So there's no immediate consequences. In fact, it's probably gonna be, be quite good fun eating whatever I wanna eat immediately. But then there may be short-term consequences with energy dips later on in the day. And there are definitely gonna be longer-term consequences as well. So think about the short, medium, immediate, short and long-term consequences of the thing that you're contemplating deleting. But if you decide that actually there's no, there's no harm, it's not really anything that I have to do, it's just something I've been doing for, for like forever just because I've been doing it, then yeah, consider just deleting it. Now if you can't delete it, is it something you can delegate? Is it something you can get somebody else to do instead? This doesn't really work very well for things like health and fitness goals uh, and, and tasks. You can't say, right, well, I want to get fit. I want, I'm going to pay someone to get running for me. But there are maybe elements that you can delegate um, that you perhaps are you know, a part of the, 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 the bigger thing. So take running, for example, take exercise. Now, that might not be something you particularly enjoy doing. Uh, and if that's the case, then maybe you can outsource and delegate the responsibility to come up with interesting and varied workouts also known as getting a personal trainer, or going to an exercise class, or getting online workouts that you can get some variety in different things. You're, you're, you're outsourcing and delegating that responsibility. You still have to do the work yourself, but there's a part of it that you're just getting rid of. So don't just think about delegating as the whole thing. Think about which aspects you find unpleasant in this particular instance, and see if you can delegate those out to somebody else. Same thing with meal planning. If you hate meal planning, then get like a HelloFresh box or uh, one of those protein boxes that come with, ready, with meals ready-made or just the ingredients that you need to make up three to five meals each week. Uh, and that way you don't have to think about meal planning. You don't have to think about preparing or getting the ingredients and shopping for the ingredients because a box just turns up once a week and you just cook from that. So think about what it is about the task that you find unpleasant and see if you can outsource components of that. Uh, the third D is to delay which really is essentially procrastination. It's gonna keep putting it off. But no, when I'm, thinking, when I'm talking about delaying here, it's making the conscious choice, the conscious decision that you're gonna put this, you're gonna park this for the time being. Again, it doesn't really work for health and fitness. You don't wanna wait until you've got more time on your hands before you start an exercise program, or you know, eating healthier, or getting more sleep. Because these are things that are gonna, you need to kinda get on top of these things straight away if you wanna perform at your best. But there may be projects you're working on at work or things you're doing, like um, hobbies you're thinking of taking up. And actually, you want to do these things. You keep putting it off. Maybe you decide, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start this. I'm going to revisit this in 90 days. Give yourself that time frame. You're still putting it off, for sure. But because you've consciously made the decision to do that, it's no longer something you're procrastinating on. You've strategically delayed it. And there's a difference Mentally, I always feel when I make that, well, personally, when I make that kind of decision compared with just, I must get around to that someday. You decide you're gonna do it, you schedule it in, that's when it's gonna happen. And you open that box up and you start tackling it when that time rolls around. So that actually gives you a few ideas as to how you can overcome the unpleasantness of some tasks. But what if something just has to happen right now, you've gone through the DDD, delete, uh, delegate, and <laughs> delay, and you decide actually, no, I just gotta do this thing. Um, and it uh, has to be done quite, it kind of has to be done now really, but you still don't want to do it. 
Of course, you can use willpower and you can force yourself to do things. And if there's enough um, necessity, then you'll get this thing done. But if there isn't a necessity, it's just going to be quite advantageous to you, but it's not absolutely essential for you to do. And again, let's talk about weight loss and um, eating healthy and exercising more and getting better sleep and getting better recovery. Um, all of these things, you know, you could argue that they're negotiable. You can survive, but you can't thrive without really focusing on these things. So when you've made the decision that this is what I want to do, but I still don't want to do it, then what do you do in, in that case? And the, the, the one thing, the one point, a tip I would give you, if that's your situation, if that's your challenge, is to make a really deep and meaningful connection between the thing that you need to do and the reason why that goal that it's going to lead to is important to you. If you can make that connection, not just at the beginning, but every single time you do that thing, it ties a lot of emotion in your brain into the action of doing the thing itself. So if that thing is getting up in the morning and uh, going for a half hour walk or a, a, a run, uh, but you don't really want to do that thing, and when your alarm goes off, think, oh, I can't be bothered to do that. Uh, I'll just snooze and uh, I'll start that tomorrow. That's what's been happening. That's your procrastination strategy. Then connect it deeply so you wake up in the morning and you've got a trigger to remind you that this is why you're doing it. You're not just getting up to go for a run. You're getting up so that you can lose weight, so that you can get fit, so you can get healthy, so that you can be there for your kids. You can be there for your grandkids. You can have the energy that's going to allow you to do the things in your life that you want to do. Whatever the motivating powerful why the reason is behind the goal that you're trying to achieve not the goal itself getting up and going for a run so that you can lose weight or get fit that's a good start but why is that goal important to you connect the what to the why and then you can start overcoming that unpleasant reason for procrastination it doesn't just happen one time you have to do it over and over again regularly remind yourself bring up that emotion each time you perform that activity and eventually that thing, no matter how unpleasant it might feel, it becomes a part of you, who you are. This is you, just, it just, it's, just a normal, it's just a normal thing for you to do. You don't even think about it. And that's where you start getting into the world of automatic behavior, habitual behavior. So there we go, there's some ideas of how to overcome unpleasantness if that's the thing that's causing you to procrastinate. <laughs> Hope that's helped. Let me know if it's been of any use to you, any value and any benefit. And if you go ahead and give that a go, let me know how you get on with it. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Bye for now.